main difference between conventional medicine and herbal medicine is if you think about drugs, it's literally one chemical in the drug that makes it up and that you take. Whereas a herb, say peppermint, it has, this is what I like about herbs, they're not just good for one thing. Herbs have multiple actions. So chamomile is good for your nervous system, so it calms you down, relaxes you. But it's also good for your herbs, help to yeah. push your body, encourage it to heal. You do need to know what you're doing. There are some herbs that are toxic as well. For example, people fear what they don't know. We drink like herbal teas. We kind of see them as foods. When you say medicine now, that is implying something's wrong with somebody and they need to be fixed. How am I going to use this food yeah. to fix me? And I want to teach people that, yeah, it's not witchcraft. It's good scientific mm. stuff. The body is one big system. The conventional medicine will kind of train us to kind of think about it in a reductionist way. You might go to the doctor's office and you say you've got a stomach problem. While you're sitting there in front of them, they're looking at you as a gut. Herbs are not a band-aid to fix the world. Sometimes you want to just take a magic pill and yeah. everything's better. I'm really key on lifestyle. You need to respect your body. I don't encourage people to... You're not defined by where you, where you come from. Yeah. And I think that's a big message that I always yeah. want to tell people. Like, like you have to be able to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you grow up in ends, you don't realise it when you're confident, but you have an audacity to do things that ordinarily most people wouldn't be willing to do. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Atto, host of the podcast and founder of Savvy Wallet. We've got special guests in the building. Sophia, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am fine. Like I was telling you, I've got up really early today. I got up at 5.30 a.m. Uh, to go to Oxford for work. So, yeah, Man. I know, I know. But, yeah, I've got, I've got, well um, I'm very excited about this um, episode. I think it's going to be um, a great one. How's your day been? It's been okay. I got up early as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have a baby so yeah that's normal that's for me. normal life for you okay normal so what i'm feeling me. is what i would feel bad yeah <laughs> basically um so you got up early not much sleep yeah. but we're here mad um today has been okay so yeah. far yeah, yeah yeah amazing amazing <laughs> okay so tell the people who is sophia okay so yeah i'm sophia sophia the herbalist um i'm a herbalist a medical herbalist a qualified mm -hmm. medical herbalist mm -hmm. Uh, I say that to people and they're like, what is a medical herbalist? So I yes. kind of say it like people know what it is automatically, but not everybody does. So a medical herbalist is a practitioner um, trained in the medical field. So trained to almost the same level as like a GP, trained to have consultations with people and then treat people with medicinal plants, mm -hmm. um, as well as diet and lifestyle and other things as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting because I, when I came across your Instagram profile, I was like, wow, I have never heard of a medical See? herbalist ever. <laughs> Do you know many medical herbalists? Is it like... Is I it... guess because I'm in the field, I I know a lot. Yeah. Like, okay. I guess everyone on my course at uni was, yeah. you know, a medical, or well, going to be a medical herbalist. That's and now in that field, I know quite yeah. a few, yeah. Is it a growing, like, industry? I or? think it's definitely growing. Yeah. Like, I'm, I studied in... 2012 so i graduated mm. in 2015 mm -hmm. and where it was then it's definitely grown so much more mm -hmm. now people are searching for medical herbalists people are asking me how they study it, where you know how to get onto a course yeah what's the best course to do so it definitely is growing wow that's <laughs> crazy well okay we're definitely going to talk a little bit more about your story mm. uh, but before that uh, where are your parents from my parents are from jamaica so the background mm. jamaican mm -hmm. my mum was born here but her parents are jamaican okay. yeah gosh where were you born here in east UK? london yeah east, oh, so from east, london. east london yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, how, how was it growing up for you in east london i was gonna say normal but what is normal <laughs> but <laughs> um i guess like normal city city life like mm. east london i guess Everybody, not everybody knows what East London's like, but you, you know the East London that you see now, which is really quite trendy and stuff. I don't think it was like that. <laughs> it wasn't it, like it that. It wasn't then. like that back then. No. What was it like? Back like, then? you know, Brick Lane's really mm. somewhere like cool to yeah. go now. Brick Lane was just Brick Lane. Like, it wasn't mm. anything trendy. Yeah. But I guess East London's home to me. Yeah. It was lovely because that's all I knew, really. Yeah. Um, I did, yeah, I went to school in East London. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the same in all parts of London. You just kind of, you go out, play with your friends and yeah. come back. Uh, yeah. That yeah. Was what so you it was enjoyed like. growing up in East London. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah I can see. I, to be fair, I, 
you know, I've had a few guests from East London there, and they always say good things about East London. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always say good things about it. Say yeah. it's more cultural, it's vibrant, yeah. which I think it's true, and I think it's still like that to yeah. to today. It's always been yeah. mul- quite yeah. multicultural, which yeah. is good. Yeah. And it actually makes sense why it's trendy, right? Like, I think so. yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm biased because I this is like because you. I'll speak to somebody from South or mm. North, and they're like, yeah, East London's. You know, a bit rubbish. But I'm like, that's home. You know, yeah. so I guess I'm a little bit biased. Yeah, but I think it's quite cool. Mad. So <laughs> herbal medicine. How did you get into that? That's Man. like such a unique path to go in. Yeah, to. yeah. No, that's true. Because growing up in London, mm. in the city, I never knew anything about herbs or plants. When you think of health, you think of like drugs, paracetamol, things yeah. like that. So I never knew anything about it growing up. But mm. I. I guess, so I've always wanted to be a doctor. Well, for for a long time, I wanted to be a doctor. So I I went to um, college and I studied like all the sciences. Mm-hmm. I got into medical school. Um, but before I went to medical school in Liverpool, I had a gap year because I didn't get in the first year. I had a gap year. And that year I started to learn about my faith. That's where I found my faith. So I'm a Christian, okay. uh, Seventh-day Adventist. And I started to learn about my faith. And I learned that God wants us to have healthy bodies like he's given us a body he's given us a manual and he wants us to be healthy Mm -hmm. so I started to get into health you know during that year went to medical school loved it uh before I went into second year that I really had like a a really strong impression that maybe this is not the path for me I didn't know what the path was but it was scary because Mm -hmm. it's not easy to get into med school and I tried my best but after lots of prayer and just kind of doing some reading I realized that that wasn't the path Mm -hmm. so I left I left medical school. I say I left, but I went to go and talk to the dean and he said, don't leave, just take a gap year. Let's take a gap year mm. and um, just come back next year. Yeah. But during like, I think the next two weeks, I found a herbal medicine course. Okay. So I had to actually leave that course. And so mm. I, I spoke to him further and I left medical school to go and study herbal medicine. So I came back to mm. London from Liverpool wow. and found it. So I think my faith helps me find herbal medicine, if, mm-hmm. if I'm honest. Uh, and then it's just been mm. no looking back from then. It's just been straight. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What was it about <clears throat> herbal medicine that was like, okay, I want to do that? Because there's lots of stuff that you could do about the yeah. body. There's stuff you could do about the brain. Yeah. All sorts. But what was it about herbal medicine? That, you know? I guess it was just, it was when I started learning mm. about there's another way you can treat yourself. Like you can take yeah. plants that can make you better. I just thought that's yeah. that's something that I've never heard before. Like I can't say that I've um you know I've I've heard about it and but I just haven't looked into it. I've never heard of it. And seeing I guess seeing the the benefits and people speaking mm-hmm. highly of it, I was like, yeah, definitely wanna it sounds so interesting. I was yeah. just immediately drawn to this way of working and thinking as well. Mm. So. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> so the degree that you got Bachelors yeah. of Science mm-hmm. in Western Herbal Medicine. Yeah. What were the key things that you took from that degree? So naturally, I took the, the main thing, anatomy and physiology. That's what you mm. kind of do in first year, which was, wasn't was new to me because I learned that in med school. So anatomy and physiology, learning about the human body, how it functions in health, yeah. and I guess what to look for when um, it's not healthy. So we also looked at, you know, how to diagnose, um, do like if you come, a patient comes to you, how to look for disease or understand what's going on in their bodies. So that's one of the, that's like the basics. And that's maybe what I would have learned in med school anyway. Then I guess in the second and third years, we looked at plants. So that's the main thing that I took from there because I knew nothing about plants. Interesting. So we had to learn about, you know, what plants do what to the body, the Mm. the constituents of some of them, all of the names. So Mm. we, like, you might call peppermint, peppermint, yeah, which we do. So plants have common names like peppermint, Mm. but then they have botanical names or scientific names, Mm. which say peppermint is menthe piperata. So you have to know Uh. all of the Latin names for the plants that you're talking, you know, learning of. I guess, so for example, um, common names are really fluid. Yeah. So you, you, somebody might call, you know, we might call this peppermint here Mm. in another country or another part of the world. They might have another herb that they call peppermint but it's not actually peppermint oh, so imagine right, if okay. you're prescribing yeah. something you say peppermint to somebody it's, it's very ambiguous oh. but if you say mentha pip you will know this is okay. that herb okay. so yeah okay. i guess sense. it's kind of safety oh okay yeah. okay <laughs> i get it so okay so th- that 
because my next question was going to be like, what's the difference conventional and, you know, herbal medicine? Mm. Where where does it kind of differ or Detail. is it complementary? So, well, I'll answer the second bit. It is, it can be complementary because yeah. I've got patients that I see and I'm treating, but they're also being seen by their GP. Mm -hmm. So it can be complementary. As yeah. a herbalist, you've got to know what you're doing. If yeah. somebody's on drug medication, you've got to know what they're on so that you don't give them anything that's contraindicated or that's going to cause issues. Mm -hmm. So you've got to kind of, it can be complementary. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people do come to me though because they've tried the conventional way. It's not worked for them and they want to try something else mm -hmm. or they've had, I guess, you know, bad outcomes or yeah. side effects and they want to try something else. So it can also be alternative and not just complementary. Mm -hmm. I would say the main difference between drug, like conventional medicine and herbal medicine is, if you think about drugs, if you're taking for an, an aspirin, for example, it's one drug and it's one chemical. It's just, it's literally one chemical in the drug that makes it up and that you take. Mm. Whereas a herb, say peppermint, it has a multitude of different chemicals in yeah. there. And we as human beings, we're quite complex ourselves. Yeah. The food that we eat are complex. When you eat like a piece of broccoli, that's not got one chemical. It's got a load of various different chemicals and nutrients in there. Mm -hmm. So it, it only makes sense that we would benefit from plants that also are made up with lots of different chemicals yeah. because they do so many different things. Okay. So that's the main difference, I would say. Okay, like, cool. Yeah. So I'm wondering, and I'm sure people are thinking this question, herbal mm. medicine and regulation. What, yeah. what, what's happening with that? Because you're you're in that field a lot, right? Mm. So is it currently regulated? Is it on the way to be regulated? Mm. Yeah. So, okay. So herbal medicine is not statutory regulated. Okay. okay. And what that means is if, so for example, a nurse, nursing or being a doctor, mm. that is definitely regulated. Yeah. So you can't see a like you're not a doctor you're not a doctor or you're not a nurse you can't go on the nhs website see a job for a doctor in you know whatever part of the country and say i'm gonna apply for that yeah. you or well, you can apply but you they're, they're gonna ask you for your papers okay. they're gonna ask you for your um your register if you're mm. on the you you need to be on a particular nursing register or a doctor's register to practice that mm. whereas so that's statutory regulation if you're uh, studying herbalism then you graduate there's no such thing as statutory regulation. So you can call yourself a herbalist even if you haven't gone through the proper... Really? Yeah, you can actually... But that's why there's something called kind of voluntary regulation. So herbal oh, okay. medicine has governing bodies and professional bodies mm. that you can only be a part of and get on that register if you've gone through the proper channels, so if right, you're okay. truly qualified. Okay. It's just that it's not... You can, you don't have to join one of those bodies. You can just come out and say I'm a herbalist and start treating people. Okay. However, that's why I guess it's more com if you say if you were looking for a herbalist, you'll probably mm. you wouldn't just go and ask a friend, or do you know any her <laughs> you'll probably go to the register. Yeah, the register. Hundred percent. And look yeah. at the professional bodies and see yeah. who, you know, who's in my area, who can okay. I go to? Okay, yeah. interesting. So even though you say it's not statutory, they're kind of making <clears throat> moves to make it separate. Yeah. The haves and the haves not. Yeah, I just don't think it's way. the government is making those moves. Yeah. But as a body of herbalists, yeah. you have to kind of have that volunteer okay. regulation to kind of yeah. safeguard the yeah. profession, really. I mean, yeah, yeah. right? Because it's, it's frustrating for, you know, all of you that have gone through the degree, mm. have studied it, and then somebody else is just like, oh, yeah, I'm a herbalist. Yeah. And they come on Instagram and they're selling yeah, that yeah. they're herbalists, selling exactly. their courses. Or they're coaching or whatever. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, okay. Definitely. That's bad. Okay, that's <laughs> interesting. So after like, you know, you studied mm. um, herbal medicine, what was like the next step? What, what do you end up doing after that? Most people that study herbal medicine, they don't study to kind of be employed. You're going gonna, to gonna be self-employed yeah. usually. So I wanted to practice as soon as I left just to kind of keep it going. Mm -hmm. um, I... I went straight into practice part time. I went to a graduate clinic. So I don't know if you've heard of Neil Jard Remedies. It's like a, oh, uh, it's like a chain kind of health, mm -hmm. health and beauty shop around London and okay. and elsewhere in England. But they have like a graduate clinic for practitioners. So I started in there. I was doing that once a week, and that was good. I didn't continue. I think I did it for a few months. But I didn't continue just because, mm -hmm. I guess the area that I was in it was just outside of London. I wasn't getting many clients and 
it's a thing where if you don't get, pli- get clients, you still have to pay for the space. So even though you was a graduate, they're making you pay. Yeah, but it was oh. much cheaper. It was much cheaper oh, okay. than like so you can do the graduate clinic for yeah. a year after okay. you practice after you graduate. Yeah. So it was much cheaper, but you can only charge a certain amount as well. Oh, okay. So it's it's a great concept. I yeah. just I guess I was a poor student yeah. or just graduated <laughs> student. I didn't have the funds, yeah. but I was definitely working for. I was actually working in those yard part time mm. on the side, um, which was which was great. I guess I wanted to do some work where I was still getting into yeah. coming into contact with people mm. and having those conversations about health because people came in the shop for their kind of beauty products, but also uh, for health products and supplements and herbs. Okay. So I got to kind of share that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Still, basically. Okay. Oh, mad. And then you now, now currently, I think you mentioned, I think, mm. I think you did mention, right? I don't mm. know. Now I'm getting, if I'm getting confused <laughs> offline <laughs> and on. online conversation <laughs> that you are running a patch practice right now yes, right yeah. running practice plus you are currently private on like you're offering private yeah like, one-to-ones with people exactly currently right now right yeah can you talk to, to us a little bit about day-to-day what you kind of like do there yeah so i mean in the so our practice we only run it one one and a half days a week we run it one day a week and an evening for the week yeah so we see clients so we have full-on consultations with clients we provide medicines so we have a dispensary there as well so after we've seen a client we would make a prescription for them and then dispense it for them okay uh, sometimes people come from the public and just ask for certain herbs and tinctures so we sell that stuff as well okay you sell her i yeah, was yeah, thinking yeah. i didn't think that you were selling products i just oh, thought really? that you were recommending yeah herbs to people but i didn't know that you were creating yeah 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 so like ah. you know like you might go to the doctor yeah. and then they give you a prescription and then yeah. you go to the pharmacy okay and then they'll dispense it for yeah, you. so yeah. we kind of do that in-house ah, um, right, other okay. herbalists send their prescriptions for their clients to us okay. as well and we dispense for them oh wow okay. yeah so it's like a dispense you might like we might have see a client and mm. then their prescription is consisted of like a, a tonic with maybe five to seven herbs so we'll have to make that up and yeah, really yeah 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 okay i did not picture that at all yes yeah, so that's what we kind of um okay. that's also what we study when we are in uni oh, as well. to do the mixtures of the tonic and exactly the herbs. and okay. dosages and stuff do you get referrals from other doctors that are not herbal you know that are not in herbal medicine do they because i'm trying to understand if How they recognize it so i think it's very individual okay so it's not like all doctors recognize or yeah. all doctors don't recognize it. it's yeah. very individual okay. like i've had some clients where they're seeing their gp as well and it's been a nice conversation like you can actually speak yeah. with the gp either directly sometimes with email mm. or through the client okay and they're quite on board they're like they're willing to work with you yeah at the same time, I've had doctors that were like, stop that. Stop that stuff. <laughs> or They say, stop using your stuff. Yeah, side. <laughs> like, stop that. And they're like, <laughs> they say, stop it. And they say, like, they sometimes put fear in the client. Like, yeah. you know, that stuff's going to cause you. They can sometimes say some outrageous stuff, like, that will cause you liver problems. And okay, then, depending on how the client is, you've got to, like, weigh up whether it's worth working with that client. Because if something happens to mm. them, which you know it's probably not going to be the herbs, but you might get blamed for it so you also you've got to kind of That's cover kind your of back it is when you're working with certain people so i kind of i'm weary about who i'm working with yeah and i i personally know some doctors that are all for like herbal medicine mm. and they would sometimes kind of offer that first as you know what you should look at yeah. when you're sick before you go to like drug medication yeah. Sorry, I'm going to ask you this question and mm. just so that we're clear. What What is herbal medicine? So okay. for the lay, layman's okay. terms, so everybody understands what, yeah, what that is. Yeah. Okay, so herbal medicine, I guess I'm, I'll try and use it in simple plants. Yeah. I say simple, but they're still, you know, mm. plants. But I keep saying peppermint. Let's say chamomile. Mm. Yeah. So chamomile, it's a, it's a flower. Uh, you've heard of chamomile tea before. Yeah. Chamomile is a flower. To make herbal medicine from it, you can either have it as a tea. So you would dry that herb and have it like brew it as you would brew a normal tea. Um, You can also make a tincture, which is usually what we sell in the dispensary. And that's an extract of the herb, usually in alcohol. So how to make one of those, you would... um, I make some at home by myself, but the ones that we use in clinic, we get them wholesale from good companies. But you would soak that herb in alcohol for a good number of weeks. Yeah. 
and then that extracts all of the um, chemicals mm -hmm. from the the plant, which is what is giving you the medicinal properties. Yeah. So it extracts everything, then you take out the the dead material, mm -hmm. and that's your chamomile tincture. That's yeah. a herbal medicine. Okay. Um, but, but herbal medicine can come in all different forms. It's yeah. like in teas, tinctures. What's the tinctures? I know so the tincture is the alcoholic extract. Oh, the alcoholic extract. Like, okay, cool. It's like when okay. you macerate yeah. it in the herbs. Okay. But you can, you, it doesn't always have to be alcohol. Some yeah. people use glycerin. Some people use vinegars. Okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah, sometimes it can come in like a, a capsule mm. form. So you can powder herbs and put them in capsules. Yeah. There's so many different ways you can yeah. take it. Um, yeah. Okay. But yeah, it can be used in so many different ways. Powders, okay. teas. That's amazing. Mm. And, you know, staying on camoline as an example, mm. what would what would be the benefits of chamomile. Yeah, drinking it as a tea, having yeah. it as a liquid? Yeah. So I guess chamomile is a lovely, we call that a nervine. Okay. It relaxes you. Okay. If somebody has trouble sleeping or they're having trouble kind of relaxing, chamomile is great for them. Okay. But it's also, and this is what I like about herbs, they're not just good for one thing. If you've got like a drug, it's got one chemical, it's doing one thing in the body. Mm. Herbs have a multi multiple actions. So chamomile is good for your nervous system. So it calms you down and relaxes you. But it's also good for your gut. It's slightly bitter and it helps to improve your digestion. So if you've got bloating and yeah. wind and um, inflammation, it can actually soothe all of that. Okay. And that's, an, that's a nice combination because a lot of the time stress is what causes people to have gut issues. Mm. So if you've got one herb that's working on your gut as well as your stress... You're doing like an all round. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's given it's yeah. given medicine all round. It's helping the problem in different on different levels. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and you mentioned this earlier, right? Because it sounds so beneficial to me, and I don't want to dare I say it harmless, but at the same time, why is there such a fear of herbal medicine? Because at the end of the day, right, a lot of us drink tea. Yeah. We're not scared of drinking tea. Yeah. A lot of us drink mint tea. We're not scared of drinking mint tea. We're not scared of drinking other herbs. There's so many herb teas. Yeah. We're not scared of that. But there's a fear of, you know, herbal medicine. I guess where does that come from? And why do we have that? So I think I think people fear what they don't know mm. naturally. If you're we drink like herbal teas and stuff, but we kind of see them as foods. Yeah. Which herbs and foods, they you know, mm. there's a there's a big crossover with herbs and foods. Herbs are foods and they can be foods. But when you drink pep peppermint tea or chamomile tea, you just kind of see it as the food. When you say medicine now, that is that is implying something's wrong with somebody and they need to be fixed. How am I going to use this food yeah. to <laughs> fix me? Like this is not this is not going to do what it needs to do. So I think people you you if you've grown up in the city for example not knowing anything about herbs and all you know is drug medication the first thing that you is it's not going to be herbs which is going to be the first thing that you turn to if somebody mentions herbs you're going to be like no what you know what is that mm. people fear what they don't know and if you all if you've been kind of not i don't want to say indoctrinated that sounds bad but if you've been taught that you, if you're in pain, take the paracetamol. Yeah, if you, you know, fair. have an infection, take the antibiotics. If you've been taught that, it's hard to deviate from that. Yeah, and if somebody true. comes to something else, you're going to be like, you're going to be very skeptical. So I get why people are skeptical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's funny because <laughs> when we were talking, um, <laughs> like when we were like talking before we did the episode, we were talking about like witchcraft, <laughs> yeah. herbs and witchcraft. And, yeah. you know, I don't think anybody thinks that now, but oh. like, no, I, I think, think people do. People still do think like herbs and witchcraft, really. Yeah. And it's not their fault because okay. a lot of people portray herbal medicine like that. Yeah. I've had so many people message like me. Like it's indie and it's other yeah. and yeah. Yeah. People have yeah. messaged me, yeah, I'm a I'm a witch. I'm a white <laughs> witch. Can we like collab? Can we do something together? And I said, no, no, no. I'm not into any other. I'm not in I'm not a witch. Yeah. I'm not a black witch, white witch, any witch witch. <laughs> I'm not a witch. <laughs> Is that a witch? Yeah, there's loads. Like that is like, and that's why when people like see herbalism as this kind of mystical, yeah. stuff, I don't blame some people because that's what a lot of people portray it as. Yeah, that's why though I practice and run a clinic, my main passion lies in teaching people. Like mm. I want to give people knowledge, especially yeah. young people, because this is crazy. if we had this, <laughs> if we had this knowledge from young, we, yeah. we just grow up with it. We won't fear yeah. it. And I want to teach people that yeah, it's not witchcraft; it's good scientific mm. stuff. Because I'm, I, I like science. Yeah, I like things to make sense. I can't mm. just say 
there are some herbalists that practice in a way that it's like, yeah, I don't know, in a kind of wishy-washy way. Mm. I don't want to offend anyone, but in a way that is, you will see it's closer to witchcraft. Okay. Maybe. I don't know what they do, but I like mm. the science of behind it and to the okay. traditional uses of med- medicine and seeing mm. evidence, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I completely get what you're saying. I think, like... <sighs> Somebody can be a witch in whatever they want to be a witch in, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. They can be a witch in whatever subject matter. Why does that have to have an impact on what the thing is? It's a natural thing yeah. that's on this earth that exactly. we already consume anyway. And the mm. second point I was going to make was, I know you were trying to say not indoctrinate, but at the same time, we have been conditioned in a way to be like, yeah, okay, I'm going to take this tablet. Yeah. It's okay. It's a chemical. We haven't really question even me i'm thinking i'm thinking when i'm saying this i'm thinking about myself mm. i haven't questioned ibuprofen paracetamol or any of those things i just kind of take it not really knowing what's in it exactly. not really knowing yeah okay i know that like you know it numbs pain and stuff like mm. that but i've been taught that i didn't read that up myself exactly. that was just something that was just passed on onto me kind of so i think it's always good when you become an adult we question other aspects of our life we might as well question the health aspect so i think it's important and this is why i wanted to have this conversation because <laughs> even when <laughs> even when i was like when i looked at your page and then you know like on instagram you can see like other people i, I i'm not gonna say i saw witches <laughs> Because I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to admit on Instagram. Yeah. But I saw other people that were doing, let's say, ritual. You see it. You yeah. see, like, people with, <laughs> yeah, people with eyes and, and stuff yeah. and all this kind of... Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's sad that that can be... I don't think it's the face of it. I guess, especially being in my field, yeah. I see so many not pe- people that are not like that. <laughs> but I think to the outward person, that might be the, yeah. f- the face of it. Like, yeah. And I guess media doesn't help as well. Like no. you see in a lot of media, mm. where people say, oh, alternative medicine. The person is always doing some, you know, yeah. something that's kind of this kind of other realm <laughs> sort of stuff. You see it a lot, like yeah. media doesn't help it either. No, you know? no. Is there any drawbacks that you know of? And I know this is a loaded question, but mm. is there any like drawbacks to like, I guess herbal medicine because mm. I know there's lots of herbs. But I mean, just generally speaking, yeah. obviously with paracetamol, ibuprofen, obviously you can't take too much. Otherwise, there's going to be mm. issues there, right? Is there anything? Maybe not like similar like that, but is there? Yeah, issues so, there. I mean, I wouldn't say sim- so similar because because they're so different. Mm. Drug medicine is usually quite potent, hard hitting it's one chemical that's going for one receptor in the body it's gonna do that you know something whereas herbs the the various chemicals they 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 act in a mild to moderate kind of way so they do the job that like i don't want to ever kind of uh limit what they can do but they're not like uh potent in a way that's like taking over your body they kind of push your body to do what it's supposed to do so your body naturally wants to heal it's got all the mechanisms and processes that happen mm. that try to bring about healing yeah you know when you've got inflammation in your body it's trying to get itself better your body's not out to destroy you mm-hmm. trying to keep itself alive so herbs help to yeah. push your body and in, encourage it to heal yeah and um, that being said you do need to know what you're doing because some herbs are not good for some people mm-hmm. there are some herbs that are toxic as well yeah naturally um mm that you know there are some herbs that are toxic um but there's some herbs that might not be good for somebody so for example li- licorice can mm. be great for like as a tonic it can be help help t- it can help with stress and things mm. like that it can help with inflammation but somebody with high blood pressure you might want to stay clear of licorice or too much licorice because okay. it can actually increase your blood pressure oh right okay it not in a health not in a healthy person but if mm. you're you have high blood pressure already mm. then it might actually be Okay. more detrimental to you oh wow and that's quite a serious one but um just some, some something simple like peppermint mm. so people usually say oh yeah peppermint uh, is for good for like gut health mm. so if you're bloating and stuff have some peppermint which is true but what some people might not know is if you've got heartburn for example mm. we might say don't use the peppermint maybe try chamomile instead because peppermint it can relax the little muscle mm. that separates your you know your food pipe from your stomach when when that's relaxed, you're going to get more acid coming up. So it might oh, make your okay. your heartburn worse. So right, you just got okay. to kind of know these okay. 
things. But you've got to see a herbal medical list. Yeah. yeah. Oh and, gosh, and you can yeah. also read books as well. Because, yeah. yeah, I would always say, so, to tell someone to go to a professional, yeah. come and see, come mm. and see me. But I also want to give people the power to yeah. use some of these remedies, remedies at home. Mm. I don't think any of us should put our health into anybody else's hands. Okay. Yes, there are professionals that if you know you, you really can't fix yourself and you're really sick, you need help. Mm. But you've got to know, I want to teach people what to do at home to keep themselves from getting sick or when yeah. they are sick with minor stuff, how to get themselves yeah. better. Love you that, know? love that, love yeah. that. And you know what, this ties us nicely into stress. Would I say I'm stressed today? I'm stressed that <laughs> I woke up early. I'm stressed about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm stressed about that, but generally I would say that I'm not really, I'm not really a stressy person. Yeah. So... You know, I was looking at your website and mm. um, so I was looking at some of what, you know, her herbal medicine can help, right? Mm -hmm. So I saw like a range of conditions from, you know, IBS to diarrhea to asthma to high low, low blood pressure mm. to the nervous system, nervous system problems like stress, right? So we yeah. take stress as an example, which I think is, let's say it's a bit more common, right? A lot yeah. of people are in very stressful roles you know trying to get the bag trying to yeah. you know go up in life <laughs> how can herbal medicine help with the causes of stress yeah um yeah basically how can it help with it so i mean i think when i don't know if herbal medicine can help with the causes because your the causes are going to be the things in your yeah. life right so mm. whether you're working too much so that's a stress on the body. Sometimes work is stressful itself. But even if you love your job and it's not a stressful job per se, but you're what you're doing too yeah. much of it, that's a stress on the mm. body. If you're not getting and people just see like stress, oh I can't pay the bills or I'm worrying about money. That is stress, but stress can come in many different forms. If yeah. you're not sleeping enough, so if you're not getting your good solid hours of sleep a night and 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 looking at so many screens like we do before bedtime. Yeah. If you're like doing that and not getting enough sleep, that's also a stress on the body. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting enough nutrients in your diet and you're eating a lot of processed junk food, that's a stress on the body. It Stress comes in many different forms. Mm. So I don't think herbs can change the causes of it. That's kind of up to us. But I guess herbs can help you navigate and deal with stress. Okay. So if somebody comes to me and they're under a lot of stress and I probably can see it, sometimes stress manifests itself in different ways in different people. Someone might come, they can't sleep. Uh, they might have bad like gut issues and really a lot of anxiety. The first thing that I'm going to like, I'll, I'll look at, I can't just say I'm going to give this herb for this condition. I don't treat conditions. I treat people. Okay. So two people might come to me in the, yeah. under stress with similar stuff, but they could get a totally different prescription. Mm. But Generally, I'm going to look at herbs that help to calm down the nervous system. So the relaxing nervines. So these like chamomile we spoke mm. about, are things like lavender, passion flower. Yeah. These help to relax the nervous system. Okay. I'm going to look at herbs that are, we call them adaptogens. You might not, you might or might, might not have no, heard of those. I've not heard of that, no. They're becoming more popular, but these okay. are kind of herbs that help your body to adapt to stress. So okay. when you are That's under stress, like so many things happen in your body to help you deal with that stress. And mm. if that's happening short term, that's fine. So things like your heart rate increases because you, your, your heart's trying to pump more blood around your body yeah. to get whatever stressful thing you need to do out of the way. Your blood sugar increases to make your muscles work faster. Mm. Things like digestion and reproduction, those are like put on the back burner. Like you mm. don't need to be thinking about get, making babies mm. or digesting food in stressful times. Your body kind of chooses what systems to prioritize. Okay. So as I said, under a short amount of time in an acute stress, so that's fine. Mm. But we generally don't tend to have short stresses. Our, our stresses are chronic. Yeah. We're going through like um, bad situations for a long period of time. So those systems that were naturally put in place to help your body deal with the stress, they start to become detrimental because I mean, a heart rate, a high heart rate for a long time, you're going to get increased heart, mm. um, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, diabetes, mm. um, infertility, you might not be able to, um, you know, reproduce, mm. trouble sleeping, um, trouble digesting your food and IBS and all these things come into it. Mm. So um, I kind of forgot what the question was. Oh, it was like, how, <laughs> yeah, does so it help, how does it help with, how does it um, help? yeah, how the does it help with the courses? Yeah, how can herbal medicine help with that? Yeah, yeah. so the adaptogens, yeah. those those okay. herbs help to negate some of those negative effects that stress causes. Okay. I wouldn't say, though, if someone comes into me and they're going through all of that, mm. I would give them, like, nerve eyes and adaptogens mm. and things that they need to mm. be as tonics. 
But I will still also tell them you need to change your lifestyle. Herbs are not a band-aid to fix the world. You know, sometimes you want to just take a magic pill and yeah. everything's better. I'm really key on lifestyle. So you, you can take all the adaptions you want, all the nerve ends you want, and they can help. But long term, your body's going to need to... You need to respect your body, respect the the laws of your body, and herbs can work with you. Mm. But I don't encourage people to continue ignoring the laws of health okay. while taking herbs and thinking that's going to be a good long term solution because mm. it won't. I agree. That's a, that's a good example. I think. I think so. That's a good answer. Should I say? I think mm. that a lot of people or many people, like you say, will just ignore the signs and just want the something to fix them, mm -hmm. right? If you've gotten to that place, then something's, like you say, something's caused yeah. an issue. So maybe actually fix the root cause. Exactly. Yes, they can help in the short term, but for mm -hmm. it to be a long-term fix, yeah. it's probably not the, like, the wisest things. Yeah. yeah, and actually herbs work better when mm. you're when you're doing the things because i guess yeah. what i said before herbs help your body to do what it's trying mm. to do which is heal yeah but you need to actually do those things work yeah. rather than working against the healing yeah. yeah so when people are stressed i do recommend deep breathing exercises okay i recommend making sure you're sleeping mm. you know the right time eating good getting outside in nature that's another mm. big thing nature yeah. is so there's been studies that show how beneficial no, uh, nature can be on your nervous system and mm. how it can calm you down yeah um, so yeah, getting up to the forest, mm. some green, doing some maybe deep breathing outside. So deep breathing can actually, there's also studies to show this as well, it can actually calm you really like instantly. Um, if you're going through a stressful situation or, you know, you're panicking, deep breathing can mm. can actually lower your blood pressure um, there and then. Um, so it's, okay. it's stuff that you can just do wow. anywhere. That's yeah. incredible. Is there is there any... Her herbs that are good for like relieving stress yeah so yeah. i would so the the nervines that i mentioned before like mm. you know passion flower chamomile lavender skull cap uh those are really good ashwagand uh, i talked about adaptogens Never heard of that one. yeah it's um it's one of the most pop the one of the popular adaptions that some people okay. might know about but these adaptions that help your body to deal with stress so ashwagandha is one um, you've probably heard of ginseng before. No, 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 no. man. I I feel like herbalists. I just think everybody knows. Yeah, what they know, that's what, what you're I mean. About. That's how, that's how I'm asking you all these questions. I don't <laughs> yeah. know any of this stuff. So these are herbs that just really help your body. Again, they they give they're like a tonic to the body yeah. and help your body in those rough situations. Because sometimes mm. you're going to be in stressful situations that you can't control. For example, when someone dies, like you're yeah. experiencing grief, that's out of your control. You can't speed up the grief process. Um, you can't avoid it, but it's a big stress on the body. And sometimes people need that help in times like that. Or if they're traveling for work and they can't actually change that at the moment. And it's a, it's not like forever, but it's a, you know, a good period of time. Right. You need those herbs, those adaptions to help you through. So yeah. okay. that's when they can be quite helpful. Wow. I've not heard of any of those yeah. <laughs> herbs. No, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm definitely going to Google them. I've yeah. not heard of any of them. No, okay. it's really good stuff. Whole other world this is. is. This is crazy. This is how I felt when I went to study how yeah. it was a whole other world. Some people on the course they kind of grew up in that kind okay. of around that and grew up in country and they know a bit about herbs, but it was mm. a it was like mind blowing. Wow. For me. So another thing that people struggle with um linked to stress mm -hmm. is um sleep, obviously and a bit of anxiety as well. Mm. If a client of yours came yeah. with this problem, walk me through the conversation that you would have with them to help them resolve. Okay, this problem. that's a good question. So, if they've come with sleep issues that like they can't, they're finding mm. it hard to sleep, I will ask them a lot of questions around the initial problem. So, I'll say, How long have you been experiencing this? Yeah. Um, when it started, did anything happen around that time? A lot of people, they might experience, like I said, we just spoke about grief, they might experience grief, they might have. Um, moved house moved countries yeah. changed jobs got married finds that you know that's one that's another quite a big thing uh so i would ask them what happened around the time that this started mm -hmm. i'll ask them has it has it got worse like progressively worse since it started mm -hmm. i'll ask them if there's any patterns so can they see a like a pattern of when it happens is it, you know, just before they go into a certain place of work or somewhere because, you know, that can link to anxiety. And yeah. I'll ask them what they're doing. So about their sleep hygiene, what they're doing before bed. 
if you're looking at your screen, and we all do it, it's so hard not yeah. to do it because we're kind of conditioned. Phones, right. <laughs> Phones, TV, computers, they all emit blue light. And blue light, it, so melas- you need something called melatonin to help you to, s- to sleep at night. It's like this hormone that makes you sleepy. Mm-hmm. If your, your, your melatonin reacts to light, so as the sun goes down and things get dimmer, melatonin starts increasing in your body. If we're cons- consistently under these artificial lights and have this blue light coming from the phones and the laptops and stuff, then it, doesn't, it signals to your body that it's not melatonin time yet. Stay right. awake. Okay. Keep yourself okay. up. So yeah. it, it, it reduces the amount of melatonin that your body makes um, to help you feel sleepy. So I'll ask them about their sleep hygiene. What are they doing at nighttime? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Do they have like a wind down routine? The, the room that you sleep in, is it is it is it too hot? Is it too yeah. cold? Things like that. I'll, I'll also ask them what kind of sleep problems are you having? So are you finding mm-hmm. it hard to get to sleep? Or are you finding, are, do you get sleep easily, but do you wake up in the middle of the night and then can't yeah. go back to sleep? So, or, so you're finding it hard to stay asleep? Or is it just early morning waking? Because mm-hmm. they all kind of sometimes can mean different things yeah. um, physiologically. So I'll ask them all those kind of questions too. I'll ask them what they've tried. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like so many. And then I'll <laughs> go on to like other stuff in their bodies yeah. as well, like their life. What, what wow. do you do for work? Do you like your job? Mm-hmm. You know, what how do you feel about you know yeah, different things yeah, and yeah. wow get that's really so interesting sometimes. like it's really like full 360 like you were saying yeah, yeah. what you eat as well yeah. that's a big thing as well wow and that will help you determine the right course of action of course mm. you know changing these areas and then are you thinking about herbal medicine at all yeah in yeah these solutions oh definitely as well? yeah because herbal is like it's like your um your what, artillery it's okay. like your your what you have in the yeah. bag it's it's what helps, but I can't, <clears throat> in good faith, give somebody hers mm. without addressing mm. other lifestyle factors factors as well. Because it's just, yeah, you, you, yeah. As I said, it's not a bandage to just yeah. make everything correct like a magic pill. Yeah, I, I have to talk about those other lifestyle factors because the yeah. body is is one big system. Mm-hmm. The conventional medicine will kind of train us to kind of think about it in a reductionist way. So you might go to the doctor's office and you say you've got um a stomach problem or stomach ache or i don't know something wrong with your gut yeah they're looking at they're look, while you're sitting there in front of them they're looking at you as a gut so they're just looking at your gut, Didn't, <laughs> at I, gut. it's weird <laughs> or or you come in here with um anything i don't know some yeah. inflammation you, you got something in your knee or mm. inflammation they're looking at you as a knee they're not looking at the body as a whole yeah so the body is so interconnected if some area is not working correctly it's going to have an effect on all other areas of your body mm-hmm. um so if someone comes into me with um, a gut problem or they can't sleep i'm going to ask you what's your diet like what is your how is your digestion because mm-hmm. um the gut and the mind are so linked yeah i and so that means the gut and sleep are so mm-hmm. linked you can have sleep problems might not actually stem from you just oh I'm I'm stressed I can't sleep because I'm thinking about yeah. you know how I'm going to pay the bills. Sleep can like lack of sleep or sleep problems can actually stem from your gut health as well because yeah. so many like um, different chemicals and hormones are made in the gut that mm-hmm. affect the rest of the body or affect your immune system. So yeah. as herbalists, we're trained not to look at the body in such a reductionist way. We're mm. we're trained to look at the whole person. Yeah, and link. I've got to build a picture in my head of what's going on in this person's body. Okay. And you, yeah. I think you referred to it as like <clears throat> your pillars of take care of your health. Is that, mm. is that, is that, I think when we had a conversation, right? Pillars of health, right? Yeah. So can you talk about those pillars of health and why they're important? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think like it's all good and treat, it's well and good treating people with mm. herbs and when you're sick, making yourself better. But what we really want to get to is prevention. Mm. Obviously, you, you can never, never get sick. Yeah. But prevention is so much better. So the pillars of health help to keep you healthy and uh, to pre- prevent you from getting sick. So um, s- those are like nutrition. Mm. So what you eat, uh, water, <clears throat> getting enough water, mm-hmm. you know, intake in your diet, uh, daily exercise, mm-hmm. um obvious one sunlight like you know we get enough sunlight sometimes Mm. when we're just in office job all day long we don't get out in the sun um rest and temperance because your body needs that Mm. um sleep 
And one of the, one of the main ones for me, for me, it's trusting God because mm. we said that stress is so rampant in society, and stress is like one of the leading killers of in heart disease, um, cardiovascular disease, so many different things. Stress is one of the number one killers. Mm. So something that is. I find trusting in God and knowing that man, I'm not alone in this world he's mm-hmm. got me that helps me to be calm okay. it helps me to because t- two same things can happen to some somebody yeah. like so two people can lose their job one person's stressed about it and one person's like yeah that's true and that totally different thing is going to happen that in their bodies true. you know so it's all about perception and you know having that trust can just help the perception you know yeah Mm. Another thing that uh, that I found very interesting, you said that it can help <clears throat> herbal medicine can help with women's health. Talk to yeah, me a yeah, little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, how oh, does it help that? Yeah. I'm passionate about women's yeah. health. As, <laughs> I'm a woman. Yeah, uh, women's health is it's something that's become really popular as well. Like a lot of people are getting into it. Mm-hmm. A lot of women are saying that they didn't have this information or teaching growing up, which mm. we didn't. You know, in school you, yeah. you get a bit of sex education, but what do you really know about your body? Yeah, so. Yeah, women's health is. I mean, it, it presents its way. It, it presents itself in so many different ways in the clinic. Like some people might come with painful periods. Yeah. They might come with, um, you know, they might come with irregular periods, mm-hmm. meaning they don't know how to get pregnant, or you know that that's an important thing as well. They might come with fibroids or so many different problems that can happen menopause well menopause is not an issue it's not a problem but it can present itself with problems menopause mm-hmm. is natural so there are herbs that help that act as tonics to the female system there are herbs that can help you when you are experiencing things like period pain and um irregular periods they can help to they can help to i guess regulate things okay again that's another area where i always look at the pillars of health first what you're what you're eating how you're sleeping all of those things as well as looking at herbs to help them in yeah. their way okay yeah it's really good stuff yeah wow we might have to do another <laughs> whole segment on it honestly, honestly. <laughs> women's health yeah honestly it sounds like herbal medicine is so beneficial there's something yeah. else that was interesting right mm-hmm. as well as you obviously studying like herbal medicine I saw something around, let, let me see if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, <laughs> endobiogenic you medicine got that. practitioner. You right. got that. I got it. Okay, cool. So many people don't get that. Really? Yeah, you okay. should be proud of yourself. <laughs> so yeah. what, what, what does that actually make you a practitioner of, like specialist in? What, what is that? Endobiogenic medicine, I'm going to try and explain it like in the most simple terms. Yeah. It, it, it It's a system, a system of medicine that believes your body is controlled by all of your hormones, which is the truth. So when people think of hormones, you just think of like your sex hormones when you when you become like when you go through puberty. So like testosterone and mm. um estrogen and stuff. But everything in your body, all the systems that happen in your body, they're all governed by hormones. So cortisol, um, progesterone, there's so um there's so many different things that happen in your body thyroid your thyroid hormones yeah. and they're all connected to one another so if something's wrong if your estrogen's out of balance it's going to affect all of the um hormones in your body if you're stressed so your cortisol is through the roof it's going to affect all of the different hormones in your body so endobiogenics looks at all of the the levels of all of these hormones and different chemicals in the body relative to each other and okay. it sees where there's imbalances and then mm. it treats it on that base basis. Okay. So as as an endobiogenic wow. practitioner, I'll see somebody. They'll do a special blood test to get mm. like an analysis of that. Oh, really? You can do this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the special blood test. But you also will see them in person and carry out different kind of um, mm. diagnosis stuff on them, which can give you an insight into what's going on in the body and what mm. kind of hormones are out of whack. Okay, and I guess what if there was an imbalance, what would you kind of do to bring it back to balance? Like, how could you do that? So again, herbs. Herbs, yeah. okay. Plant medicine, All right. yeah. right, okay, so you'd use herbs to... So if it was like something, like we said, um, I think you said cortisol, st- stress, is that stress related? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So something like that, then with the herbs that you mentioned could bring that exactly. back down. Okay. It just gives you a bit of an insight as a herbalist yeah. to, as to what exactly is going on in their body. and okay. You know, it is it's so it's such an insightful system of medicine, yeah. and a lot of people that you know use it experience benefits from yeah. it. Doing that test, right? Because I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever done a hormone test like that. Yeah. 
how often would you do something like that? So if somebody will come to me and they want to do an mm. endobiogenic um, mm. blood test, uh, so they will so I'll tell them to get the blood test first, mm. and then I'll see them in a consultation. Okay. And then I'll cont- I'll start treating them with herbs, and maybe in another six months, six months to a year's time, mm. we might have another blood test just to kind of put them side by side, side, yeah. side by side, and see you know what's happening yeah. where have we gone better where are there areas mm. that we can still work on so it's i think having that at least once mm. gives an insight into what that person's constitution is mm. and how we need to help them and definitely then you can choose herbs and lifestyle and diet advice mm. and stuff that are going to definitely help them because you know about yeah. certain imbalances i mean the the data can't lie mm. and it's very different to like a normal blood test so yeah. a normal blood test takes your blood and it measures the amount of the, you know, the levels of hormones in your blood. So you could have a certain level of estrogen mm. and that's what a, um, a blood test will show you, a conventional blood test. And it might say that levels are fine, you're cool. But it doesn't show you what that estrogen is actually doing in the body. Mm. Or it doesn't show you how that estrogen is in, co- in comparison to uh, progesterone. So everything's relative to one another. You can have like... Um, so a lot of women's problems stem from too much estrogen, for example. Mm. But you could have a blood test and your your levels of estrogen see, seem to be okay. But you might have really, really low progesterone. So in relativity, you have high estrogen. So a normal blood test wouldn't say you do, but an endobiogenic yeah. blood test will show you your estrogen is too high. And it will show you how to get, mm. you know, then you can kind of bring work in bringing about that balance. Okay. So I don't know if I've kind of made it a bit. I think yeah, I think, it... I think that I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I, I think I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, we've got I to think... do our own research, right, yeah, yeah, as well yeah. to understand it. That is just something yeah. like it's just a, like a kind of an insight into yeah. how it can how it differs. Hmm. How it That's interesting. Helpful. Like, so would you be doing those blood tests every time you see a patient? Like, what would be the indicator to say, okay, <clears> I need to to do this for somebody? So I guess it's the, if the person comes to you. And okay. Some people just want a normal. Okay. Uh, you know, and I haven't had, yeah. I'm only just qualified. I qualified as an endo, but I've always been used bits of endo by genetic mm-hmm. medicine because my treatment in uni was actually an endo by genetic oh, okay. practitioner. Wow. So I've always used bits of it, but I've only become qualified just before I gave yeah. birth actually. So I haven't done much of it, but some people might come to me just they want a regular herbal consultation without yeah. all of that endo biogenic stuff. Some people would. So it depends on what the person wants. Mm. And sometimes I might mention it and say, man, this is something that would really be beneficial for you okay. with you know a certain problem especially when it's linked to hormones which everything is really but health women's health problems yeah infertility immune problems like mm. it, it yeah it can be helpful for anybody yeah. okay. i even want to get one myself and okay yeah i, I mean i do on. as well I need, to, <laughs> I need to figure out all of this health stuff because yeah. that is that's a journey i've been going on for like a few years i'm trying to understand more about that i'm I'm Mm. trying to understand from my perspective not what people have told me yeah discover it on my own because i feel like i haven't it's just my knowledge about health is what's fed to me not what i've kind of discovered and asked people yeah and spoke to about so yeah so like i had this thought right so in terms of herbal medicine it sounds like it's not a cure so much so it's like a is it more like a a really is this even a word? Like, it's more like it helps with relief. Is that more accurate to say rather than it's a cure? I don't want to. I wouldn't say it help, just helps with relief because mm-hmm. I like herbs. They 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 do stuff in yeah. the body. Like they just in the same way a drug will get yeah. into your body and latch onto a receptor and bring mm. about certain um, like certain circumstances or certain chemical reactions. Mm. Herbs have chemicals in them as well and they can mm. latch onto receptors yeah. and bring about um, healing. So I wouldn't say it's just, it's. I wouldn't like, not. I wouldn't limit it to it being a relief. Okay. People definitely, you know, have come to me and have had a, uh, herbs for whatever period of time, depending on the problem, and they're, they're good. Yeah. So, yeah, I, okay. in, yeah, and I, I just, it, it, in as much as you wouldn't say drugs are, can just be relief, which uh, yeah. a lot of the time they are, though, the symptomatic. Yeah, because I'm trying to understand that if, you, <clears throat> if you've had a client, yeah. obviously don't, you're not going to give me details, yeah, but I just yeah. want to know if you've had a client that was really bad, mm. health-wise, whatever, like what kind of situation. Yeah. And 
herbs like kind of turned it around for them. That's oh, what yeah, I'm trying yeah. to have an understanding of. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, and okay. I guess if we did it, I guess her- I don't think the herbal yeah. practice or profession would continue okay. going because like okay. who would come back? Yeah, you know, and who would tell their yeah. friends if they yeah. if they haven't had good experiences? Yeah. So definitely, like you know, just for example, sleep, yeah. um, stress. I've had people that they're sleeping much better. Mm. I've had people that their periods are lighter mm. and not as um, not as painful and they're more regular. Yeah. I've had people get pregnant when they've been trying to get pregnant. Really? Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big one though. Yeah. That's a and I never promise struggle. people. People come of to me, I want to get yeah. pregnant. I don't say I can make you pregnant. That's not in my head. I don't, I don't think that's in my head. <laughs> you can't be like, I can make you no, pregnant. No, 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 no. I, can't, I yeah, can never can't, promise you can't anything. Make that promise that yeah. Is, yeah. But I would say let's get your body in a like I will help you you to get your body in a healthy condition that if pregnancy is to is 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 to occur it can occur in that kind of mm. situation. So okay. yeah, I would um yeah I never make promises, but but man when your body is in the right state then pregnancy is it's a natural thing it, yeah. it can happen you know so okay. amazing. yeah amazing amazing. <laughs> So, okay, so I'm wondering, <clears throat> right, how do we navigate this? There's so much information. How do we mm. navigate both the herbal medicine and the traditional? Mm. And, you know, for us to find out what's good for us and what isn't good for us. It's tough, right? Because, yeah. like, a lot of this stuff, I've had to, I've had this conversation with you, so, and the people who listen to this, fortunate mm. that we can, but it's not, like, no knowledge. This is yeah. not common knowledge, you know? Yeah, no, for real. And I guess, yeah, I've got to keep see, remind, reminding myself it yeah. isn't common knowledge. It's yeah. common to me because I'm in that kind yeah. of place. But I would say, like, <clears throat> there are some people that I can recommend, myself being one of them, mm. that you can watch their content yeah. when I start making content again yeah. about her. Because I, as I said, I love to teach people. Mm-hmm. So w- there's people that you can watch that can share this information with you in, sy- in systematic ways. I'd also recommend people to get... um books there's mm. books that i recommend that can just introduce you to herbs in a yeah. really kind of an introductory way it can help you to use herbs at home for common simple ailments if you've got a cold yeah. if you can't sleep if you've got like bloating after like a, a big meal or something happening so it can introduce you on how to use herbs by yourself at home for like minor elements and i think that's the best place to start use yeah. it on yourself use it on your family members use it on your children and then it it gives you i guess it gives you confidence in herbs yeah. that's how i started to use it so when okay. i was studying i started to make some stuff for myself for mm. family members and yeah it started to give me confidence when they started working i was like, on my days okay. obviously there's a and they were work. happy too as well. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mad. Exactly. <laughs> mad, mad, mad. Sophia, now this has been, I've <laughs> learned a lot. I've taken away a lot. And I know that the watchers and listeners have taken away a lot. And, you know, remember, hers <laughs> is not witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> it's not witchcraft. Listen. Hey, I d- yeah, I, d- I never really thought it was witchcraft. I, oh, think, that's, man, uh, yeah, I think that's a bit of a sh- <laughs> I mean, I drink peppermint tea. Yeah. A lot. Pretty much daily. It's like my favorite tea. So, yeah. like, yeah, I think that's. Is a stretch to think that because herbs are all around us and we consume them in basil's a herb, right? Yeah. Okay, we put that on our pasta. Exactly. Time. Yeah, time. Is about. oregano one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All these exactly, are herbs. <laughs> exactly. These are you herbs. get them from the supermarket. Mm-hmm. You put it on so like we can't say okay, it's witchcraft for some and it's witchcraft for <laughs> That's others. Such a good it point. doesn't. <laughs> it's either or. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think people are just. I think you're right. I think it's the information thing. Mm. I think people are very comfortable with oregano, thyme, and all this stuff being on food because yeah. it's it's normalized. But the other aspects, maybe they don't really understand exactly the, the, the impacts of it. So that's why they, you know. So hopefully, this has dispelled a lot of, um, you know, a lot of those uh, questions that they have. Yeah. What do you have planned next for yourself? As you know, I just had a baby. Well, yeah. I say just, but she's eleven months now. Okay. Wow. So I'm. Um, I'm thinking I'm in yeah. fully kind of motherhood mode, a new era of my life, a new mm-hmm. phase. So I'm really focused on baby, but I am going to be getting into my teaching again. I'm really passionate, I guess I said about sharing. Mm-hmm. Um, later on this year in September, I'm going to start doing a junior herbalist club with teaching okay. children wow. about herbs. Um, yeah, so, so a epic. few things in the bag, but wow. that's epic, that's <laughs> yeah. amazing, bit by bit. Yeah, that sounds good, and hopefully, like you said, you're bringing back content as well. 
potentially. Yes, potentially, yeah. and it will be not in the same way. It'll be yeah. very, yeah, just in a manageable way. Yeah. Full time, looking after a little one full time is it's tough. hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. time is a luxury. Oh, good luck. Uh, where <laughs> can people you. find you, obviously, if they want to see the content that you do have now and they want to connect with you? So I would say Instagram first. Mm-hmm. So Sophia the Herbalist on Instagram. Yeah. Um, YouTube, I've got like a load of videos that are old videos. Um, Sophia the Herbalist too. I will try and start bringing that back slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so mainly Instagram and YouTube at the moment. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sophia. Like I said, Thank really you. appreciate you coming on the podcast, sharing all your knowledge and just, you know, talking through us through, you know, previous clients, giving us a rundown on what like um, herbal medicine is. I think, yeah, it's very important. Like I said, I've, I've taken a lot from this so yeah really Thank appreciate you, you. I'm um glad. have you got any final words for the watchers and listeners um don't be scared of herbs um yeah start using them on yourself and yeah ask questions if you don't know something but yeah don't be scared of them they're yeah. really useful appreciate you thank <laughs> you appreciate you tuning into this episode of the podcast and we'll see you next week's episode